for joining the Needy Meds Brief, Safe Needle Disposal. My name is Carla, and I am the Education Coordinator here at Needy Meds. Before we get started, I'm going to go over just a few housekeeping tips. First of all, this webinar is being recorded, and we will convert it into a video so that we can upload it onto our YouTube channel which you'll have access to probably by the end of the week at the latest, the beginning of next week. You can also feel free to ask questions at any point by typing them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel. However, we will reserve answering those questions until the end when we'll do our frequently asked questions segment. And if we don't have the opportunity to answer your particular question during the live webinar, we will follow up with you personally via email by tomorrow afternoon. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Carla. I'm the Education Coordinator here at Needy Meds. And before we dive right into our Safe Needle Disposal program, I want to make sure everybody is aware of what Needy Meds is and what we do. That's just an example of our home page screenshot. And the website is really the face of, of our organization. Needy Meds is a national nonprofit, and there's our mission statement right there, indicating that we are dedicated to educating and empowering those seeking affordable health care. And we do that primarily through three ways. We do it by providing information on health care programs, by offering direct assistance, and by facilitating programs. And we do this both through our website and our toll-free helpline. And one of those programs that we facilitate is what we're going to talk about today, our Safe Needle Disposal website. And without further ado, what I'm going to do is pass the mic to our expert host, Leah Zarillos, who is the project manager for Safe Needle Disposal. And she will talk to you all about it and why it should be important to you, your family, and your community. So bear with us if you hear a few moments of silence while, re while I transition the mic to Leah. Thanks, Leah. Thank you, Carla, for having me as your guest today. And thank you to all of you who are joining us. I hope you'll find this website to be a useful resource and something you can recommend to others, uh, whether it be family, friends, neighbors, patients, um, whomever, whomever you know uh, who, who would benefit. Uh, so before I show you the website, I'd like to provide a bit of background on the problem with Home Sharps disposal. Uh, according to EPA estimates, um, today there are at least 14 million Americans that self-inject medication at home outside of traditional healthcare settings. Usually they're given instructions by their healthcare provider or pharmacist on how to self-inject and they're usually provided with a Sharps container or they purchase a, con a container or they, used, uh, they use a home container, a household container, uh, something at home. Uh, but later on, when the container gets full, um, there's no instructions uh, for you know, how to dispose of it. Um, so with that being said, uh, there are limited options for safe disposal of household sharps in the majority of states and regions of the country. The disposal programs that do exist in certain cities or counties are typically not well publicized. Um, some, uh, and that's the same for areas and states uh, that have published guidelines as well. And so kind of going off of that, um, the communication of safe sh sharps disposal in general is not well publicized. Um, so things like sharps should never be loose in the trash, flushed down the toilet, or put in the recycling. Um, even the types of containers to use um, and dispose of sharps is really not communicated well. Um, so the, the lack of awareness surrounding the basics to prevent someone from getting hurt remains a significant and usually overlooked public health issue. And adding to the lack of awareness is the fact that many states still haven't published guidelines or recommendations. 
So to help address these issues and the overall problem I mentioned earlier, uh, we serve to educate the public on proper and safe disposal of home-generated sharps and be a prime resource for community disposal programs and state guidelines. So one other item, one other item I want to mention is the reference to the term sharps. For those of you who may not already know, there are many types of devices that are used to self-inject medication or otherwise uh, test blood, blood sugar levels if you're diabetic. Um, SHARPS is the broad generic medical term that encompasses all the different types of devices that can puncture or cut the skin. Um, so they include ne needles, syringes, lancets, finger sticks, auto injectors, infusion sets, connection needles, and sets. Um, most of the people that we talk to um, use um, syringes pre-filled um, needles, um, like pen style needles, um, and auto injectors. And so the central feature of safeneedledisposal.org is our listings of disposal programs and locations. Um, we have over 3,300 listings to date, and the types of disposal programs that we list are household hazardous waste collection events and permanent facilities, um, also known as HHW for short, Dropbox or supervised collection sites, residential waste pickup services offered by cities or counties, and mail back programs offered by pharmaceutical companies. And so now I'll, I'll show you how to search for disposal programs on our website. Uh, please just bear with me for a moment while I switch to the live website. And so this is the homepage for safeneedledisposal.org. And first I will show you how to do a zip code search. And so I'll do uh, two, two different examples um, to show you how to best search uh, the, the site. And so you'll want to do is enter your five digit zip code to the area you want to search for. Uh, for an example, I'm gonna enter Gloucester, Massachusetts. Uh, that's where our office is based. So after you enter in the zip code, um, you'll wanna select the radius. You can search anywhere from 10 miles uh, all the way up to 100 miles. Um, my personal suggestion uh, is to, for uh, urban areas, you'll wanna search uh, 10 miles uh, to, you know, lower you know the the amount of results that you could possibly get and for our urban areas and more rural areas um, search up to 25 miles because you may need to go a little bit further out to to find something um, and if you're going to be if you're really willing to travel um, or going to be you know going to another state and want to see if there are any um, disposal programs you know, feel free to search you know up to 50 or even 100 miles uh, but in most cases, um, you're gonna wanna do either 10 or 25 miles. Uh, so for this particular one, I'm going to uh, select 10 miles. Okay, um, so I just clicked on the search button. Um, and these are the um, disposal locations uh, that are within 10 miles of that zip code. Um, it, it doesn't show the mileage uh, on the results screen, uh, but generally, um, the closest disposal location uh, will be uh, at the very top of the list. Um, and so the criteria that we um, have are always gonna be the uh, facility or location name, uh, the physical address, um, a contact phone number, and also the service area. And to get further information uh, about the disposal location, uh, you can click right on the location name. And it'll give you um, a Google map of the location uh, so you can um, you know, see where it is in the area. And also um, other uh, information uh, about the, um, the facility or the, the actual collection program itself. Um, some of the other types of information we would include uh, would be a location in a building, uh, especially if, it, if it's a hospital. 
um, also hours of operation or preferred days and times, uh, you can dis uh, dispose of the sharps container. Um, and also just any other container requirements, um, any other restrictions or possible disposal fees, um, you know, we will typically include that there too. And you can also, um, if there is an option to go to, to go directly to the facility or program website, uh, we also include that there as well. So I'm going to go back to the home page and show you another example. So now I'm going to enter in a zip code uh, for a state uh, that doesn't have any disposal programs uh, so you can know what to do uh, in this situation. So this is a zip code uh, for Connecticut. That's the Hartford area. And I'm going to search to for 10 miles. And so it's telling me this. And you can do one of three things in this case. Uh, you can try another zip code, increase the radius, or visit the search by state page. Um, you can certainly try doing the first two, um, but in many cases, unfortunately, um, there, there, it may be an area or a state uh, that doesn't have any disposal programs. Uh, so what you'll want to do, and what I personally would recommend, is to go to the search by state page. And so you'll want to click right on the link where it says search by state, and it's going to take you to the um, state search page on the website. And so then what you'll want to do uh, is select the state on the map. And so I'm going to go to Connecticut in this case. And so it's giving me an overview of the um, state guidelines. And on the state information pages, we also include the information for the state agencies that regulate hazardous and medical waste uh, that you can contact uh, for more information. And in some cases, there may be you know, some disposal locations in the state, but that just didn't show up in the zip code search. Um, those will appear right at the bottom under Community Sharps Disposal Locations. And another thing that we sometimes include on the state pages are um, PDFs of state-specific state brochures and fact sheets uh, for household sharps disposal. Um, there isn't one on the Connecticut page, uh, but for an example, I'll show you one from Vermont. I'll just go a little further to the north here. And this is the state information page for Vermont. Um, so the Vermont Department of Health um, has um, issued a specific uh, brochure fact sheet uh, for Sharps disposal, and you can access that uh, by clicking here. And this is what it looks like. You know, it's something that you can uh, print out, you know, and you know, give it to somebody else, or you know, pass it on to a patient, uh, or if you're working in a healthcare facility, um, you can bring it there. Um, you can also um, contact uh, the Vermont Department of Health directly uh, to get copies of it as well by uh, calling that number. Um, and so that uh, that those are the basics uh, for searching the website. And um, sometimes people, you know, call and have problems searching the website or questions, or they just may not be comfortable, um, you know, using using the website or or have other you know further questions. Um, we're very happy to help. Um, we have a toll-free helpline that's dedicated to the website, and that number is 800-643-1643. And that goes directly to the call center of Needy Meds. Uh, all of our representatives are trained to answer questions on Sharps disposal, and they can also search for disposal programs and provide the information. And our call center hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm just going to switch back uh, to the uh, slide, if you'll just uh, wait for one moment. Thank you. And so before I, I leave you, um, I wanted to go over a few of our top uh, frequently asked questions, FAQs. 
Uh, so first, uh, does Safe Needle Disposal pick up or provide Sharps containers? Um, we do not pick up Sharps containers. Uh, for that type of a service, um, we would recommend contacting uh, the city or county health department uh, and ask for information on medical waste disposal companies in the area that could provide pickup services uh, for someone that's uh, disabled, homebound, or uh, has a med medical condition that would otherwise prevent them from going to a disposal site. Um, and no, we don't provide Sharps containers. Uh, we are only an information resource at this time uh, for Sharps disposal and disposal locations. Um, Sharps containers, the red biohazard containers, those are typically available for purchase at retail pharmacies and medical supply stores, uh, and also um, online retailers like Amazon. Uh, you can find them on there as well. And will my Sharps contain, um, excuse me, will my pharmacy doctor or local hospital take my Sharps container? Well, unless otherwise uh, mandated, um, Healthcare facilities, pharmacies, um, they usually won't take back Sharps containers. Um, they are typically required uh, by state laws to pay for their own medical waste disposal, and they usually don't have the resources to also take containers from the public. Um, if you do find that you are in an area that has no uh, disposal programs um, and you're, you really don't want to you know, dispose of your sharps in the trash, trying to avoid that, you know, as best you can, uh, unless it's, you know, the last resort. Um, it might be worth a try asking a healthcare facility to dispose of your container. Sometimes they'll be willing to dispose a small amount of sharps or you know, charge a fee, you know, if it's one time only, uh, but it's ultimately determined by the individual facility. Um, so chances are probably more slim, uh, but it could be worth a try. And how do I dispose of unused sharps? Um, that's something we do get asked every now and then. Um, so if you have unused sharps uh, that are still in their original packaging, uh, haven't expired, and don't require refrigeration, um, we know of an organization that uh, might accept them. Uh, the name of the organization is called the World Medical Relief. And they have a website. It's World Medical relief.org. Um, they are an international organization, uh, but they're based in Michigan. They take donations of uh, medication and medical supplies uh, that can still be used. Uh, and they also have a phone number. Uh, that phone number is 313-866-5333. Um, if you have sharps that have expired or do require refrigeration uh, that have not been used, um, most likely you'll need to dispose of them as if they were used. Um, for this type of situation, uh, feel free to contact our helpline, um, you know, and we'll um, give you the recommendations for that and see if there are any disposal programs you know, that might take them, and, or we'll go over the procedures for how you can dispose of them you know, in your trash at home. And lastly, can I start a community sharps disposal program at my facility? Um, Sure, um, that would be wonderful. Um, however, Safe Needle Disposal cannot register or license Sharps collection programs. Um, to start one, um, we would recommend contacting your city or county health department. Um, they should be able to um, walk you through the process and ultimately provide the, the proper licensing uh, to do that. And so um, that concludes the overview of the website and what Safe Needle Disposal does. And I will bring back Carla for you. I think she has uh, some announcements to give. Um, just a moment, and thank you again. Have a good day. Good afternoon, and thank you again, everybody, for joining our Safe Needle Disposal Brief. With no, no doubt what an expert Leah is, you found a lot of that information useful. And as she mentioned, if you do have further questions, you can contact us directly through our Safe Needle Disposal website, phone number or email address, which I'll provide at the um, end of this webinar. In the meantime, I'll take a moment to make sure you're aware of some other upcoming webinars scheduled later this month. We have one tomorrow, in fact, through our partner RX Outreach, Making Medications Affordable. 
we have our overview webinar, which we do on a monthly basis. This one is coming up on the 15th. And later in the month, on the 22nd, we have an interesting webinar by an expert about ex accessing resources needed to live a full life with obsessive compulsive disorder. As promised, there's the email and toll-free helpline for safe needle disposal. If you are interested in receiving drug discount cards or brochures from Needy Meds, you can email our colleague Alana at alana at needymeds.org, or you can always give us a call on the 800 helpline. For now, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this afternoon, and we do look forward to your keeping in touch. Take care.